have you have you played with the set linear velocity at all? Like like to get yeah, it's a great way to handle uh, physics if you don't want to have to do transition twos. Just simply do a, a forceful push, basically, is what you're doing for the character. You're giving them a push off and then using the the uh, gravity of physics to handle the rest of it. You don't have to keep track of anything after that. Now, what would be the difference between... I mean, you, you talk, I've, you've mentioned tr transition two a couple of times, so why? what would be the, the benefit over doing one over the other? Set linear velocity is going to allow other physics happenings to continue to impact the environment, whereas the transition two is going to try and complete the entire transition. If I said move from a Y location of 10 to a Y location of 100, it's going to try and do that and not allow anything else to happen or any other physics reactions to happen inside that same time period. Um, whereas doing a... Uh, linear velocity like that, other physics uh, events, sideway moves, pushes, whatever's going on can continue to happen. It's, it's a good way to handle this kind of an event. Okay, so from a... Okay, I got you. So, I get, I, set of linear right. velocity really sounds like a, a physics... Uh, you know, and it, it is. It, it, You're using the physics engine to push off. Right, so so that makes sense that you're just saying, hey, I'm going to push you in this direction, and then whatever happens after that is just, you know, it's just physics, right? So, Right. What were you going to say, Ed? I was going to ask Brian a question. Um, this, I mean, it's an interesting question you raised, the mixing of the transition library with um, physics movement. Uh, as your, it can as, be done. Oh, yeah. I, uh, well, yeah, as... Um, as Charles is aware, I recently worked on a Connect 3 game, which is outside the scope of this discussion. But um, I used both physics and transitions for different parts of the movement. So originally I wanted to use physics for the gem drops, but uh, Box2D has a sort of um, a little bounciness to it, even when you set bounce to it. Not bouncing, but like compression of the bodies if they drop on top of each other. And I just wasn't happy with that, so I mixed and did some of my movements with transitions, which you are you can control very specifically. Yeah, you very know, precise control. Over a specific amount of time. But what I wanted to say was, is if somebody who is listening to this says, well, I've got this game and I've got complicated movements, and some of them are very straightforward, and other ones I want them to be controlled by physics, or uh, I want them to be, um, what, what is it, what's the word I'm looking for? When something travels in a path and it's uh, affected by gravity, it's a... Trajectory? Uh, uh, the word will come to me afterwards. Anyway, the point is, is you can pause the physics engine at any time, yes. and then use transitions to take over part of the movement, and then unpause the physics engine. Yes. Or, or restart it. And I actually, um, I got an example of that in the last book I wrote, the beginning mobile application development with Corona. Uh, the last chapter is a tower defense style game, and I use a combination of transition twos that are following a path right. and um, a uh, physics then for throwing objects at the, the people running on the path. Right. The, the physics engine is great for when you need to have inverse kinematics or you need to have some kind of response to the collision with a physical oomph to it, you know, like something gets pushed or bounced away. But transitions are good for getting specific paths or movements without having to do all kinds of crazy calculations and uh, uh, second order uh, calculus and whatever. You know, forget that. Just turn off the physics engine for a minute and then use a transition. Yeah, okay. I completely agree. 